Hello, responders. How, how are you doing today? Well, we have another episode for you. I'm excited to share this information on how and what does the EPA say about NSF hose and using it as an emergency response solution. So this uh, report that I'm going to show you, it, it briefly talks about um, lay flat hose. It doesn't really go into depth about it. One of the things I, I wish they would have done, they would have done more research on how it can be used for emergency reasons. But this report's kind of old from June 2011, so the EPA doesn't always give out these reports all the time. So it's just a brief summary of how and a guide for water utilities on how to respond to an emergency and get water to people during an emergency response or emergency disaster. So let me show you some pictures of it. Here it is. It's, um, it's, a, it's a pretty long document, but we're only gonna highlight some things. But there are some things in here that I think are worth looking at, especially the, some of the tree diagrams. They make it real easy to understand how water utilities get water to people during an emergency situation. What other channels can be used? What are distribution points can be used? Where the sources are, which is, you know, it's always good to know. And most of you guys already know that, especially if you're in the water business. But there is a little small little reference to lay flat hose. And we are responsible for it. Portable pipeline systems. We were the ones that helped. Uh, they mentioned the city of Seattle in this report. So we, can, we, we take responsibility. That was my predecessor, David Jackson. He passed away in 2016. But he was the one that helped the city of Seattle with this project. So I'm very proud that we're in this report and uh, we're going to get into it. Okay, so as you know, as a water provider, there are certain distribution points in your system that you give give water to people. Like you, you know that, of course. Now, the EPA, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up on the screen here. The EPA has a kind of a definition of when you were going to need to use or tap your fire hydrants. Now, this is where lay flat hose comes into play. Uh, it, you're actually tapping your fire hydrant, but, you know, using a fire can, you're not actually going underground and tapping the, the, the hard pipe, but actually using the fire hydrant. Now, with that being said, in an emergency, hopefully your system is not completely compromised. And this text right here kind of talks about it. So I'm going to read directly from this text and, and, and see how they kind of define when you were going to need to to tap or to bypass uh, your, your hard pipe system. It says, depending on the nature of the damage and the ability of a utility to make functioning pipe connections, it may be impossible to transport water from functioning to non-functioning portions of the distribution system. If uncontaminated water is in sufficient supply within the existing water system but cannot be distributed as needed, the water may need to be tapped at fire hydrants, that's us, or other locations within the functioning system for local distribution and or moved in bulk water tankers. So that's bulk water, like you get, you're, you're distributing uh, in tankers, you're distributing in boxes of water or, or bottles of water, stuff like that. It goes on, there are a variety of logistical considerations for offline distribution, figure, six, uh, figure seven, which I'm gonna show you this great little tree branch, that tree diagram that they made up here in the EPA report. It's really cool, I like it. It goes on to say, these are discussed below. Other emergency response programs maybe also already have plans in place for dis distribution of other emergency supplies. Therefore, for offline water distribution, it may be beneficial to, to coordinate with other local emergency response programs. This is very, I think that's great. You really should be working with uh, emer local emergency response programs and how they can offer you help if something happens to your system. Okay, so basically, if you... Read that point where it says um, the water may need to be tapped at fire hydrants. So that's where lay flat hose comes into play. And hopefully your whole, your whole system is not compromised. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Now, this is an image from the report as well. And the title is Distribution to Customers Through Existing Water Systems. Uh, water system, uh, my pardon. Now, you have your normal water source, you have your neighboring utility who could possibly could give you water, you have your local alternative source potentially requiring treatment like lake water, ocean water, groundwater. But I like how they did, they have a little line that goes right, if you see a little dotted line, it goes down, normal water source. So that's where we're at. Hydrant topping. Now, I'm going to show you another image right now where I use, I put this little bubble, white bubble, lay flat hose. That's where lay flat hose 
falls into. They didn't. This is not in the report, so I don't think that there's lay flat hoses in that in in that bubbles in the in, in the report. That's that's I did that just to, to show you where we fit in this whole uh, diagram. Now, uh, prepackaged water I think is important too. You might want to get vendor contracts, federal aid, all that. There's people that do that. Um, there's some really a lot a lot of good companies that are that are doing that as well. Also, neighboring utility, and this is where I think uh, I always talk about mutual aid agreement, lay flat hose and hydrant topping, mutual aid agreement, neighboring utility. That all that stuff is applicable to lay flat hose because you can help each other out, uh, even with lay flat hose. So, like like maybe your neighbor needs to go, needs large sizes of lay flat hose. Maybe you can go small lay flat hose. I said that in, in, a, in a previous video. Uh, it's better when you guys work together on different sizes so that you all have available sizes that you can respond uh, with and this diagram i think does so well of showing how everything is interrelated everything is connected uh, when you have an emergency response plan so and as you can see bulk water you know that's kind of like a water guy's nightmares using bulk water that's one of the toughest ways to get water to people that's definitely emergency you know defcon defcon 4 defcon 5 or whatever it is a uh, huge disaster so hopefully you don't have that problem and you still can use your system to do some bypassing, maybe to get new distribu distribution points uh, during this uh, emergency. And this is where lay flat hose ends up. So just wanted to show you this because I thought it was really good. I liked how they had both sides, you know, the sources and then the distribution sites. So something to think about if you're considering building an emergency response plan, Put lay flat hose right there under hydro tapping, right next to mutual mutual aid agreement and neighboring utility. Because in an emergency, the community is going to help you. There, there's it's going to be a community that comes together and get everybody to try to, you know, get water to everybody. So I just thought it'd be valuable to show you this. And if you're listening on to the podcast, I can send you this presentation uh, through email. Or, you know, you can find me on LinkedIn, you can find me um, on Facebook as well, uh, and I can send you all this information. I can even send you the full report. So anybody who wants this report, please don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, for this report. Okay, so I'm going to go to now the next slide, and we talk about, it, it actually talks about lay flat hose. Okay, so let's get to the part where we actually <laughs> were talking about lay flat hose. Uh, I know that I, I promised that. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, now... Now they give an example on Seattle's emergency drinking water distribution planning. So this is just an example for whoever reads this report can kind of, you know, put their, their hands around what, what this involves. And, it, and it's different for every utility, right? So just because this is Seattle's way of dealing with uh, distribution planning and emergencies, it's, it doesn't mean that's going to be yours. But I, I, it's great to see, you know, the way they spelled out each thing that they had to work on. So as you can see right here, it says uh, as part of their emergency planning, the C Seattle Public Utilities has developed a threefold strategy for supplying water in an emergency. Number one, interconnections with neighboring water utilities. As, as you saw in the diagram, that's also, also an option, right? Something you definitely have to consider. Number two, and this is where this is portable pipeline systems all the way. On-hand supplies of NSF certified portable flexible piping to bridge bypass breaks. They mean, they mean lay flat hose, it's portable, flexible piping, and hard pipe is not flexible. We all know that, so they mean lay flat hose, really, which can also be called flexible piping, right? And that bridge bypass break that they had, we were the ones that helped them do it with NSF hose, uh, my predecessor. So yay for portable pipelines, major win right there. So super happy about that. I made a video about that whole job in a previous video if you I'll, I'll link it here on, on this on this uh, video and uh, everybody loved that video everybody was like wow that's it's, it just showed great links and the city of Seattle was so cooperative um, this the way the water supervisor he did a whole breakdown of all the job went down and it was just really really cool to to learn about that job and the they had to replace a, a bridge and uh, lay flat house lay flat hose was out there for about I think a month or two, if I'm not mistaken, and it provided water for quite a bit of people. So this is their strategy. And number three is emergency water pro provisioning. Either use trucked 3,500 gallon bladders for filling customers' containers or using contracts to obtain pallets of bottled water for distribution. 
that's super important too. I'm actually going to do an interview with um, uh, Kevin who has a, he has a business that they specialize in some of that in providing bottled water and sometimes a bag, plastic bags of water. So, cause it's easily distributable. Uh, please look out for that video. It's, it's, it's going to be super interesting. I'm probably going to release it in the next two weeks. Uh, the interview is pretty soon. Anyway, that it says here, a lot of good, you know, to way to deal with this is it use FDA approved six quart punctual sealed bag. So again, taking local uh, vendor contracts and also having a way to truck out water is pretty important as well. So, so I'm not here just to tell you how great lay flat hose, but lay flat hose has its place, but you need all kinds of different solutions, right? In an emergency. So, all right. So there you have it, guys. I hope this was this had some value for you. So as you can see, the EPA, it doesn't really recommend anything. It's not their job to recommend things. They're, they're a federal, they're federal regulators, right? They, they're there to make sure you're doing your job, you know, and, and not do it badly. But they're not here to recommend companies. They're not here to recommend even products. But they're saying, hey, look, this is how the city of Seattle does it. Maybe you can kind of piggyback, piggyback off this as well. Okay, so any questions you have for me, you want this report, email me, I'll send it to you, no problem. Also, if you need some help on provide, you know, developing an emergency response plan, please reach out, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you. Uh, even if it doesn't involve lay flat hose, I can direct you into the right direction. So you can call me, you can email me, you can text me, whatever's best for you. And if you have any future videos that you'd like to explore, you know, please let me know. I'm, I'm going to have about five to six I'll be releasing in the next three months. So please look out for them and give me your feedback. I'd love your feedback. I, I love to talk to people in the water, wastewater business. That's that's my industry. So please reach out to me. OK, so be, uh, be safe, guys. And like I always say, think ahead and you guys take care. Thanks a lot for watching.